What's with? How can I upgrade my turrets for free? And how can I become my parents' favorite child? All questions you might find answers to right here with the upcoming 10 tips and tricks for endless dungeon. We start off with a simple but effective tip regarding the acquiring of resources. The useful materials can be obtained through opening doors, but also by smashing up specific containers. These containers are highlighted and in rare cases have more than just your typical resources, like dust, chips and mementos. The mentioned dust is used for lighting up rooms, which is useful to unlock the dark areas on the minimap, showing every incoming enemy. However, the dust has more uses than just expelling the darkness. For one, we can use it to shut down monoliths, which have effects we don't fancy, or use them to reroll the possible upgrades of our bot. The option to upgrade our crystal bot is being unlocked by drilling down on yellow shards. But beware, once the bot is done drilling for freedom and democracy, it will follow one of your teammates who needs to run back to the bot station, since the wave will be endless until the bot is back in its original position. Regarding waves, it is always advisable to perform multiple actions during an ongoing wave, like researching and moving the bot to the next area, since each one of these actions would spawn a completely new wave, which costs valuable time. To get a better handle on the huge waves of enemies, it is imperative to form a path for the monsters, by not opening specific doors and keep them shut until you want to move on, thus forming a bottleneck. And again, every open door rewards you with resources, so open them right before you leave for the next stage. A seemingly complicated part of the game is the understanding of specific stats and the hero's upgrades. One of those stats is Wit, which not only allows us to repair our turrets faster, but also to hack terminals quicker during a blackout. Such a blackout can occur once we found two terminals. These terminals will be our point of interest once the light goes out and we cannot see the incoming enemies on the minimap. The minimap, however, has one more function than just showing us where enemies spawn with the color system. These colors indicate which elements the monsters are weak to, while the strength of the mobs can be shown by moving to the spawning room. The first picture of the mobs shows their strength, while once you get closer it shows the mentioned weakness. If you are uncertain what each pitcher's element means, just go closer and press the shown button to reassure yourself. Use this knowledge to switch to the stronger weapons and build turrets with the appropriate elemental damage. Regarding the turrets, there is one part which might be lost to most of new players, namely the upgrading of said turrets. There are two ways to increase the level of a tower. The first is to research a high level at the research station, costing the appropriate resource, while the second way to upgrade has no cost at all. This can be done after your turret kills a certain amount of enemies, therefore regaining experience points and with a quick shove gets upgraded to the next tier without any research necessary. Last but not least, we will tackle the heroes themselves by checking out their upgrading system. With the upgrading machine in each level, we can enhance specific stats of our heroes in exchange for the food resource. However, further than those chosen stats, our heroes level up as a whole, enhancing the highlighted stats as well. Were these tips helpful to you? Let me know in the comments. And on how to become the favorite child, my advice would be to be an only child.